Hey guys, we have this equation we want to solve for x, okay? In this example, we are going to solve for x by completing the square. So when you first see a problem like this, your instinct is probably to factor, which is a great instinct. But if you try to factor this the normal way, it's not going to work. So when that happens, we have two options. We can complete the square or use the quadratic formula, okay? If you want to see an example where I do the same problem using the quadratic formula, I will link one in the corner, okay? But here we are going to complete the square. When I do that, the first thing I want to do is get my variables alone, okay? So all that means is I don't want this negative 6 here, okay? So I'm going to add 6 so it goes away, right? But if I add 6 to one side, I got to add 6 to the other side to keep it balanced. We're all about balance in math, right? x squared minus 6x on this side equals 6, okay? All right, now what I want to do. I want to figure out what number I can add to this side to make it so this factors to um, parentheses times themselves, okay? If you're like, that made no sense, stick with me, I'll show you what I mean, okay? To find what number will help me do that, I am going to take b divided by 2 and square it. Now you're like, I do not see a b anywhere on your paper, lady. All right, this is where b comes from, okay? When we have a quadratic um, equation, b is the one in front of the x, okay? So in this case, it's negative 6. So I'm going to have negative 6 over 2 and square that, okay? Negative 6 divided by 2 gives me a negative 3. We are squaring that. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives me 9, okay? So I am going to add 9 to both sides of my equation and see what happens. Why can I do this? Because as long as I do it to both sides, it's okay, right? I could add, subtract, multiply, divide, whatever I want, as long as I do it to both sides. So in this case, I feel that adding 9 to both sides is going to help me solve this, okay? Because I found 9 using my b divided by 2 squared, okay? So let's see what happens. I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 15, okay? Now I am going to factor this side, okay? Now you might get it before me. If so, great. I'm going to do it a certain way, okay? So to factor this, I'm going to take, we take this times the one in front of the x squared, right? Which is a one. So I have, I want to find numbers that multiply to nine and add to negative six. If you need a factoring review, I'll put one in the corner, okay? So I'm looking for two numbers that add, sorry, multiply to nine and add to negative six. Now, right now it might look like, um... None of them do, but what if I made both these threes negative? Negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9. Negative 3 plus negative 3 gives me negative 6, right? So if I were to factor this, I get x minus 3 times x minus 3, right? This still equals 15, okay? Now, when I have them the same, I can just write it as x minus 3 squared, right? Okay, now as you do this more and more, you won't have to do this fun little factoring trick anymore. You'll just realize, okay, we found the b divided by 2 squared to get that 9, which made it so I got this parenthesis squared, okay? And the negative 3 was from right here. It was the b divided by 2, okay? If you start to recognize that, you can skip this factoring step, but... If that's like, uh, I'm just going to keep factoring, go for it. That's great. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to keep solving for X. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. When I do that, the squared and the square root cancel. So I end up with X minus three equals the square root of 15. Okay. The reason I'm not writing it quite yet is whenever we introduce a square root into an equation, we need to put plus or minus, okay? So I'm gonna write it as equals plus or minus the square root of 15. Why is this a thing, okay? <laughs> now, 15 doesn't have a pretty number, it, uh, square root. It doesn't have a pretty square root number. Did I say that right? Okay, 
So let me show you an example with like a nine, okay? So the square root of nine could be three, right? Because three times three is nine. But hear me out, it could also be negative three, right? Because negative three times negative three is nine. So that's why we use that plus or minus because it could be three times three is nine or negative three times negative three is nine. Okay, now up here, it's still under the square root because the square root of 15 is not a pretty number, but we still need to remember that plus or minus there. Okay, all right, we are almost done. X is almost alone. You have been a trooper. Okay, but I need to get rid of this three, right? Negative three. So I'm going to add three to both sides. Okay, so you're like, okay, that does not look very fun. Okay, but here's what we're, how we're going to write it. We're going to write X equals three plus or minus the square root of 15. Okay. That is my answer. I know it's like, uh, I don't like answers that look like that. Right. But that is our answer. Okay. So remember we needed to use completing the square because we couldn't factor it the normal way. Right. Now your teacher might be okay with you just having your answer like that. It is possible they'll also want you to separate it out. So it's x equals 3 plus the square root of 15 and x equals 3 minus the square root of 15. That's the same thing, just written separated, right? There is also a slight chance you could like plug in uh, the square root of 15 to your calculator, get an ugly decimal, add 3, also over here with it negative. But most likely, I think most teachers are probably going to either want it in this format or this format. Okay. All right. I hope that made sense. It felt a little wordy, <laughs> but hopefully it made sense. If this did help you, if you could hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. Um, check out some of those other videos if you need to, but see you later. Bye.